Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Everyone, welcome to the show. So 38-year-old Pennsylvania resident, Marine veteran, and Proud Boys member Zachary Rell was just sentenced for his crimes at the Capitol. As I mentioned in other Proud Boys sentencing videos, I'm not going to go into all of Rell's actions surrounding January 6th. I've created a Proud Boys trial playlist on YouTube so you can watch all of the videos that I did about their trial if you're interested in those details. Uh, but Rell was arrested on March 17th of 2021. And following a four month jury trial, he was found guilty of seditious conspiracy conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, conspiracy to use force or intimidation to prevent officers from discharging their duties, civil disorder, and destruction of government property. Uh, based on the most serious of the felony convictions, Rell faced up to 20 years in prison, three years of probation, and 250000 in fines. However, the prosecutor asked the judge to impose a terrorism sentencing enhancement as they have in the other cases, and they asked for a sentence for Rell of 30 years. The prosecutor also pointed to Rell's penchant for violence and his criminal history as reasons for a, late, a lengthy prison term. He attacked officers on January 6th with pepper spray, and they said that Rell took part in many other violent protests with the Proud Boys, and he used images of Proud Boys committing acts of violence to recruit other members. So that was a feature of what they did and who they were putting out who they were trying to attract, right? Uh, most disturbing, they say that Rel posted violent videos on Parlor showing multiple angles of a woman being knocked unconscious by a Proud Boys member. These are the guys who claim, oh, we just go to these events because we're trying to keep women and the elderly safe from Antifa and BLM. Frickin' woman-beating hypocrites. Um, as for his criminal history, Rel was convicted of a DUI in 2006. This was because he hit another vehicle and he injured that driver, damaged the car and injured the driver. Having not learned his lesson, Rell was convicted of another DUI and reckless endangerment in 2015. And in that case, he purposely accelerated his vehicle and drove towards someone like he was going to try to run him over someone who he had some sort of beef with. And he was yelling slurs at this person. So he hit two parked cars. Luckily, he didn't hit the guy, he hit two parked cars, and he pushed those two vehicles towards the victim. And the prosecutor also says that prior to his arrest for January 6th, Rel was using ecstasy and LSD, like regularly, and his text messages, quote, frequently reference the use and distribution of cocaine. And Rel also testified at the trial that he got, quote, lit after their violent protests, the Proud Boys protests. Well, in court for his sentencing hearing, he took a little bit of a different posture. <laughs> a couple years in prison appears to have maybe sobered him up a bit. Rel called January 6th a, quote, despicable day. He expressed regret for his actions at the Capitol, and apparently he broke down in tears and he apologized to his family. Rel said, quote, I spent all my life trying to do the right thing, but he said he let his family down and, quote, it's my fault. It's my fault. There is no way, other way to slice it. Um, Rel also said that he wasted his time with politics. He's completely done with politics. Then he blamed Trump and his allies. He said, quote, politicians spread lies about the elections. I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. It cost me everything. U.S. District Judge Timothy Kelly presided over Rel's case, and he referred to Rel's post-January 6 comments online as, quote, chilling. He also pointed out that Rel lied during the trial. Um, apparently, Rel tried to claim that he didn't pepper spray officers, 
and there was a video of it. So Judge Kelly was like, yeah, you did it. Um, so Judge Kelly called January 6th a national disgrace, and he said that, quote, what happened on January 6th not only damaged property and hurt people, that day broke our tradition of the peaceful transfer of power. We don't have it anymore. Then Judge Kelly told Rell, quote, there's a need to deter violence in our society today. However, he felt that the government sentencing request was too harsh for Rell's actions. And in the end, Rell was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Um, I couldn't find any details about probation or fines or restitution. I, I assume it's going to be the typical like three years probation, maybe a couple thousand in restitution. Anyway, a, a decent sentence, uh, one of the longest to date. Not the longest, but one of. And, you know, these guys had a few years of fucking around and now they've entered the find out highway. <laughs> so um, as with his fellow Proud Boys leader, Joe Biggs, Rel cried about his wife and his daughter during the sentencing and, you know, should have thought of them and should have been with them on January 6th instead of sucking up to Trump. All of these guys. It's unbelievable. All of a sudden they care about their families. All of a sudden they're the most important thing to them. Yet where were they? What were they doing? Never considered that, hey, maybe I might get in trouble. Maybe this might cost me my freedom. Yeah, because they had four years of Trump with total impunity. Stand back and stand by. Stand back. We're going to close the, uh, we're going to close your cell doors. That's what they're going to hear. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share, please subscribe, please become a supporter if you can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.